and to its capital, Abu Dhabi. The growth of this city continues its rapid pace, as does its presence on the international sporting scene. This year marks the eighth edition of the Abu Dhabi Judo Grand Slam, as once again the Ithic Arena hosts one of the most prestigious events on the International Judo Federation's World Judo Tour. The Grand Slam coincided with World Judo Day, as the World Judo family united to celebrate this wonderful sport. In Abu Dhabi, a gala featuring the legendary Albano was held to say farewell to retiring president of the African Judo Union, Lasana Palenfo. The media spotlight falling heavy on this event, it was a great chance to see the emerging stars of the World Judo Tour in action. Whilst for Judo for the World, it was a chance to speak with a retiring star, the legendary Ilias Iliadis, who was present for the World Judo Day celebrations. We'll bring you all the action from the Grand Slam, and we'll see if home hero Toma, the Olympic bronze medalist from Rio, could give the crowd a gold medal to cheer. We start at under 48 kilograms, where Rio bronze medalist Galvadrak is edging ever closer to the top of the rankings. The Kazakh world number three had made it through to her eighth World Judo Tour final in under two years, hot on the heels of world number one Monkland of Mongolia, who would be relegated to fighting for bronze in Abu Dhabi against Corsé of France. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Well, this crowd really enjoying this. Monkland. Well, she's a Yuko ahead so far, looking for the Sienagi, I think, off that grip. There's the Sienagi, and she Look scores up. again. Monk back now up. She's on to the arm. Now can she get it? This then for third place. Yes, Come she on. gets the arm lock, and she gets the submission. Brilliant stuff there from Monk back. And that means she'll remain number one in the world. For now, anyway, there was the Yuko. Look at that, she keeps control all the time. Climbs up onto the arm, never lets go. And she's straight away into the Juji Gatami position. Takes the arm up towards the head, gets the submission. Brilliant transition from Monk back, as always. And she has a bronze medal. Galbadrak's opponent in the final would be Serbia's Milicia Nikolic. Would she keep narrowing the gap between herself and the spot at world number one? Mr. Mario Spisa, president of the IJF, enjoying this final. Nikolic trying with the arm over. Good attempt there from Galvatrak, the Furinagi. She wanted that arm over. And she just climbed off it, didn't she there? Didn't quite have enough control, Galvatrak. Nikolic has to be careful with that big arm over the top. A bit more careful now. She has the sleeve. There's the arm. Oh, my goodness me. And it's all over. If I'm given. Galvatrak knew exactly what she was going for there. And Nikolic did the same thing. It was an error. She felt it the first time. And this time she goes over the top. Uranagi from Galvatrak. Scores it on to win her the gold medal, and she really is chasing hard with Monk Bat now in her sights, and she's going to be there a lot over the next four years, that's for sure. That was her sixth World Judo Tour gold medal, and she is going to be one for the future. In the men's under 73 kilogram division, Sweden's Tommy Macias caused an upset at the semi-final stage as he caught the experienced Musa Magushkov off guard. Landing the Russian clean on his back for an if on score and a place in his first World Judo Tour final. There he found himself a Yuko down against Azerbaijan's world number one, Rustam Arujov. Could the world number 27 cause another shock in Abu Dhabi? What a job. A Yuko ahead, but Macias, very dangerous, and he's on great form today. Oh, that's going to be a small Wazari there for Macias. And that was a slow technique. It was Koso to get to start with, and then he just drives him. He has a second stack. So now Macias holding on with the Wazari, and that was an amazing. 
angry with himself, but Macias, a great performance. There's the Kosoto. He has a second stab at it, and look at the Kazushi hand there on the sleeve, because he really pulls the arm in, and he drives off that bat leg there, and he takes him over, and Orozhov couldn't stop it. He rolls onto his back for the Wazari, and Macias of Sweden gets his first gold medal in a Grand Slam, and I don't think it's going to be his last. And there was a medal for the Emirati to cheer, as Viktor Sportov edged a dramatic golden score contest against Sam Vantavestend of the Netherlands with this Yoko Tomonagi Yuka. Great work from the UAE judoka, who had brought the home nation their first medal of the Grand Slam. In at number three on our list of the top Yvonne's from Abu Dhabi is this thunderous throw from Fagan Galuzada of Azerbaijan. Our number two Yvonne came in the under 100 kilogram division when Brazil's former world champion Luciano Correa took on Great Britain's Philip Awiti Alcaraz. Awiti Alcaraz doing well here, but uh, he has to come from behind. Oh, he walked off to that. He had to come forwards and he made a mistake because Correa then turned in underneath him. And Awiti Alcaraz of Great Britain, right the way over the top, flat on his back. And you can see there that he had to take a chance. And Korea, of course, his experience showed in this match. To celebrate World Judo Day, our number one Ipon is a moment of pure judo from another Brazilian, David Mora, in the over 100 kilogram division. Mora, left-handed. Now he has the sleeve and lapel. Uchimata. Oh, he's going to readjust it. Brilliant Uchimata there from David Mora. And he had to readjust the support leg. Have a look at how he hops the support leg central. And that was a brilliant Uchimata here. He had the sleeve. He had the lapel. It was all set up. He had to hop through in order to get that support leg central. But it was a brilliantly executed throw. And in the end, Zalar of France couldn't do anything about it. We've just celebrated World Judo Day, and that is what it's all about. Pure judo. In Abu Dhabi, World Judo Day was celebrated by all members of the judo family who together with IGF President Mr. Marius Vita came together to pose for a group photograph. There to enjoy the festivities was Olympic and triple world champion Ilias Iliadis, one of the sport's all-time greats. And we took time to catch up with him to talk about his retirement. And now I'm staying with my family, I staying with my kids, with my wife. You know, before when I was an athlete, you know, when uh, I go back in home, I don't was in with my family. I was with my mind in the training camp. I was with the competition, and and now 100% with my family, with kids. And now I feel what is love, what is family, what is father. I miss uh, my athletes, my friends, but that's why I am staying in here. I stay with you, the family. I am staying where for Judo Federation, Judo guys, and I won't stay in Judo family. I, and if I stay in here, I don't miss nothing. <laughs> judo changed me, changed my life. First, you must be a good person. First, you must be uh, respect for your opponent, respect for your friends, and I learn from Judo. Judo it is me. <laughs> I kill a lot of uh, highlight moments in my life, in my career. Every competition is having different uh, things, you know, and uh, I have different memory. You know, I can't say, you know, Olympic Games was best day in my life. No, also world champion, also Grand Slam, also in the Grand Prix, this is different. That's why I love, I love judo. Every day I have in new memory, new good things. My best uh, advice for young judoka is his passion, guys. This is it's important for judo. You must think, you know, for your mind and your heart together if you want to be champion. 
for every judoka. I wish you the best for this day, for this happy day. You know, if you lost judo, you can be champion. You must take it with you. Your soul, your body, and judo. This is three things. Soul, your body, and judo together. This is judo. I want to say everyone happy World Judo Day. And looking to fill Iliadis' boots in the under 90 kilogram division in Abu Dhabi was veteran Frenchman Axel Clerge. A lethal combination of throwing and groundwork skill saw him through to the final. Against Serbia's Nemanja Majdov, he followed through after a scoreless takedown to clamp on a vice like hold from which there was no chance of escape. His opponents eventually forced to concede defeat by tapping out. He then did the same thing in his semi final match against Germany's Hans Conrad. This time, he scored a Yuko with Ouchigari. But once again, it was his ruthless transition on the ground which gave him a place in the finals as he continued to immobilize Conrad in another tight pin. Clerget's opponent would be looking to get his first World Judo Tour gold. Another Serbian, Alexander Kukol, defeated Max Stewart of Great Britain in his semi final contest with a dynamic Ushimata Yuko and eventually a pin which scored him Ippon. The final would be a battle between youth and experience. Which would prevail? Well, Clerge, ready for this. So are these. Looking forward to a great match. Kolj, very extreme left-handed. Oh, he gets taken down onto his side. That was almost the Yuko. Yuko giving it back. He landed on his elbow for me. Are they going to take it away? I don't think they're going to score it. Good stuff from Clerge. It has been taken off, and Kokolj now pushing forwards. He's a Shido down. He has to get a score. Either that or to get that Shido back, but he'll be looking for the score. Kosoto on Clerge and directly into the hold down here. And this is exactly what Clerge has been doing, and he's had it turned on him. Kokolj now in the hold down. Moody Gatami. Clerge has a little bit of a, well, a struggle, but he's not going anywhere from that. Kokolj holds him. He only needed to hold him for 15 seconds. He already had a Wazari on the board. And that is the gold medal for Kokolj. A terrific performance from him. Great transition. He counters Clerge with the Koso de Gap, Tanio Toshi, and he takes him down onto his back there, he rolls onto his back, gets the Wazari, then he's straight into the hold down there, has a little look at the clock, just to see what score he's got. He has the Wazari, so then he just needs to hold for 15 seconds. It was great transition, he's very, very rangy, Kokolj, and he used it to great effect there on Clerge. It's his first World Tour gold, and I don't think it's gonna be his last. The final of the women's under 52 kilogram division would see a French youngster in action as Astrid Neto took on Angelica Delgado from the USA. Well, Neto is just ahead in this match. Delgado has to come forwards. Coming up to the last minute. Oh, she ran onto that. She stepped forward with that right leg. And I had a feeling that it was going to hinge on the front leg. She put the right leg forwards just that little bit too long. And look at that. Neto was round the leg. And Soto Makakomi takes her cleanly on her back for Epon. She just drove, didn't she? And she took her onto her back for the gold medal. A new crop of French fighters are here. And I'm sure that we're going to see a lot of them over the next four years with Olympic qualification. Tokyo. Neto scores a magnificent Ippon and she gets the gold medal here in the under 52 kilograms. And France were gunning for another gold in the under 57 kilograms as world number five Helen Resovo took on a world judo tour final debutant in the form of German youngster Theresa Stoll.
Rendezvous. At the lapel. Stop. Looking for the ash she was, huh? Oh, she Gary there, Rassibu. And she's round the neck. Going for the strangle. And looking for the Akurieri. And now she's got the arm round the neck. It's not quite getting the leverage she wants. Stoll just holding off. How can she get the leverage here? You can see that it's on. And now looking for the Sony Karuma. Jimmy gets the submission. And that was brilliant change of direction in their Wanda from Rossebu. That was superb. The transition was great. The Ouchi started it off. Look at that. She's already round the net. Then she climbs round looking for the Koshi Jimmy. She goes onto the other leg as well for a Kurieri. And then when Stoll rolls over, she has to get that little bit more leverage. So she goes onto her own sleeve and, well, she gets the Sony Garuma Jimmy. It's a variation of, but it was good in the end. She gets the leverage. And that was a brilliant example there of changing direction in Dewaza and using your own body in order to get the leverage to score a point. We asked Neil to take us through Rasevo's strangle in our dojo. The difference between a strangle and a choke is that a choke is actually applying pressure against the windpipe here, and a strangle cuts off the blood supply at the side of the neck here. Now, what ha happened with Rosevu? Rosevu, uh, her opponent actually attacked her here, so the hand was already in. And then when she turned, she got into this position here. The hand wasn't actually deep enough. So she was trying to uh, change her hips in order to apply pressure. In the end, to get that little bit more pressure, and don't forget that her opponent here had her hands in at the same time, doesn't make a big difference because you can pull in and use them against them. And to apply that little bit more pressure, she came onto her own sleeve. So, so did Jimmy it was. A uh, little bit of readjustment, leant back, and applied the pressure. And in the end, her opponent had to submit. Under 63 kilogram gold was taken by Jules Frampton of the Netherlands, who defeated Austria's Katrin Unterwerzacker in the final with a pin for Ifon. It was her sixth World Judo Tour medal and her first gold. In the under 70 kilograms, there was another French woman topping the podium, as 19-year-old Marie-Yves Gaille signalled her intent for the future by claiming a first Grand Slam gold to go with her two Grand Prix titles this year after defeating Brazil's Portela in the final. At under 78 kilograms, the ball was back with the Netherlands, as world number three, Gusia Steenhaus, took gold. In a moment which could have gone either way, Steenhaus rode an attack from Germany's Wagner in the final digging in just enough to turn the tables and score a match-winning Yuko. It moved her up to world number two. And at plus 78 kilograms, it was Brazil celebrating gold after Maria Altamont came up trumps in the final against Germany's Carolyn Weiss. Brazil's Taka Bataki and Spain's Garagos would contest under 60 kilogram gold. Both were on great form. This magnificent Uchimata from Garagos matched by a dramatic dropping shoulder throw from Takabataki. But in the final, the pair cancelled each other out, with Garagos winning on penalty points. Up one weight in under 66 kilograms, Russia's Jakub Shmailov defeated Azmat Makhanov of Kazakhstan in the final. An unorthodox Kataguruma style attack scored the Russian a Rosari, which would ultimately be enough to give him his first Grand Slam gold. There was a battle of the former world champions at under 100 kilograms, Elkan Mamadov of Azerbaijan, squaring off against Brazil's Luciano Correa in the final. It was Mamadov who emerged victorious, thanks to penalty points. Finally, the over 100 kilograms division saw Romanian giant Daniel Natea continue his impressive form by taking gold. He has been reinvigorated over the last six months, and threw big all the way to the final in Abu Dhabi. Russia's Bostonov, his victim at the semi-final stage. His opponent in the final was Alexander Vakaviak, who was on the back foot for the entire contest. Natea followed an early Rosari with a Yuko counter-attack later in the fight to complete a comfortable win. His third on the World Judo Tour this year. He is now ranked at number three in the world. 
and if Natea continues this pace of improvement, he could well be a worthy challenger to the crown of the as yet invincible Teddy Renair. In action in the men's under 81 kilogram division was the man everyone had come to see. The UAE's very own Olympic bronze medalist, Sergio Toma. Toma would be back in action on home soil for the first time since winning the nation's only Olympic medal in Rio de Janeiro this summer. And the Emirati judo faithful were eager to celebrate his homecoming with a Grand Slam gold. Standing in his path at the semi-final stage was Dutch youngster Frank de Witt, who did his best to take the fight to the home hero. But in this pressure point moment, it was Toma who prevailed, landing de Witt on his back for the Ipon win. Toma was into the final. The veteran campaigner would be guaranteed a 15th World Judo Tour medal. The man tasked with ensuring it wouldn't be gold was Victor Penalba, the stylish Brazilian. Penalba looked back on form in Abu Dhabi, countering against Poland's Kubienic, before using his Ouchigari foot sweep to progress to the final. First against Kazakh Kamza, and then against former world silver medalist Mavaljevic of Montenegro. Reaping out his opponent's front leg from the inside, he drove forward to take him down. A skillful technique, executed well by Penalba in Abu Dhabi. But would the world bronze medalist be able to handle the Olympic bronze medalist on home soil? The full support of the crowd was with Toma. Who would come out on top? Well, the crowd absolutely behind him here. Toma now just got to hold off two Shidos each against Penalba of Brazil. Penalba looking for the OG. He's got great technique, Penalba. Oh, oh now then. Was that a counter? Yes, it was. Toma counted him. Penalba just overreached. And, well, he drove him over. It was almost Tewaza. It was Tewaza, in fact. And he just took him over for the Wazari. So now he's ahead. The crowd are absolutely going mad here. One second left, and he's done it. Toma wins the gold medal. And the United Arab Emirates celebrate. The crowd have been fantastic. And, well, Toma will be so happy with that gold medal because he had a difficult day. It wasn't easy all day. He had to graft for it, but in the end, he came out the winner. He was the only medalist coming from Rio de Janeiro at the Olympic Games for the United Arab Emirates, so they're very proud of him. Big celebrations, big congratulations, and His Excellency Mohammed bin Salud Peter. Another medal for them. But this is what won him the match. It was Panalba that committed, but it was certainly Toma that directed him onto his back to get the score. It was very close, but that's what this level of competition is all about. It was enough for Toma, and he is the gold medalist for the United Arab Emirates. So that's it from Abu Dhabi, as another action-packed instalment of the 2016 World Judo Tour comes to a close. Next stop, China for the Qingdao Grand Prix.